Hi friends, thank you so much for clicking this video. My name is Heather Chesina and you are welcome. So today I want to talk about the seven steps to a beginner friendly in-depth Bible study. So I'm going to make it very, very, very simple and easy. So if you are a new believer, I think this will be very nice for you and it's not intimidating at all. So get yourself a cup of tea or coffee. I'm hoping that this video will be under 15 minutes. So crossing my fingers, get yourself a cup of tea, coffee, relax, and let's begin. The first step is for you to gather your Bible study materials. I have quite a bit of things here. This is not all of it, but I just want to show you. So gather all your items and I will show you a couple of things. This is just an extra book where I do some journaling. Often I use it as a prayer journal, but at times if I want to write something more lengthy, I use it as well. So some space to journal, that's what I use. Um, this is one of my Bibles. I love this a lot. It's actually has my name monogrammed here. It's a KJV. This is leather, pure leather. It's really lovely and it's really soft, the leather. Yes. So the reason why I use KJV for studying is only because if there is a specific word that I'm interested in, it's easy to trace it from the KJV over to the Hebrew root or the Greek root, uh, depending on what book of the Bible you're reading. But yes, I use a KJV and I've, I've noticed recently I've been also using the digital format at times of the Bible. So I use Bible Gateway and I like it because I can compare different versions of the Bible. I know at times people say the KJV is really difficult to understand. So you don't have to use a KJV. You can use the NIV. You can use the ESV, the Message Bible. You can use whichever. But for me, I just feel as if at times when I'm doing a deep dive and there's something that I'm like, oh, I wonder what this is. It's easy to actually trace it from there. Yes. And this particular Bible, Oh, and I know I forgot to mention this. This particular video is based off of a blog post about Bible study, seven steps to Bible study. I'll go ahead and link it here. Yeah, so what I like about this particular Bible, it is a KJV, but it's a journaling Bible. So I, as you can tell, I love to highlight. I highlight everything. So yeah, so that's what I do. I can go ahead and jot stuff here but I've noticed that recently which I'm surprised about but recently I have been leaning onto Bible Gateway and then they also have audio versions if you are into audio Bibles yeah and then another thing that I have is timelines I think this is so important especially if you're a beginner because you want to understand, okay, when was this written? What is just a quick synopsis of this particular chapter in the Bible? So this is so lovely. It's kind of like an encyclopedia. <laughs> yeah, so it goes over just quite a bit of things, uh, dates and feasts um, in the Bible. It talks about the, the temple, Solomon's temple. It talks about, <laughs> it talks about so many things. It also talks about the tribes, of Israel and yes it's just amazing so I I would recommend for you to have a timeline especially if you're a beginner and you're unsure about what's going on in a particular chapter I'm not a new believer but this I'm telling you it are so I learn new things every time so what happens is if there's a particular uh, book in the Bible that I'm reading and I'm like huh I wonder when this was written or just if I have a certain question this is a, just a good quick reference and it's called the Rose Book Bibles Charts Maps and Timelines especially for maps if you are reading about 
maybe Goshen, I don't know, if you're reading about something like that, I think it would be good for you to go to the map and actually see what they're talking about. So I would definitely recommend this. And then of course there's commentaries. Now with commentaries, I know this, it's really a personal preference, honestly. And if you are new, what I would recommend is most of these online Bibles have commentaries that go with them. So I would say if you're new, you can use the commentaries there and see the style of writing if it's something that you really love. For me, I use a less known commentary or commentaries and I use the ones by Andrew Womack only because I think he's such a simple Bible teacher. Not simple in the fact that he's not imparting anything to you, but he makes things so simple and plain. Even when he's teaching, I find that he just sits down and he walks you through stuff. So yes, I have a lot of his, this, this is just a few, but he also has a living commentary. And I remember a few years ago, I went over the book of Acts and it was lovely. And then also I love the way he goes over Romans. I remember around 2010, I had this burden to understand the book of Romans and I looked everywhere as far as commentaries just to find, okay, who's, who can be able to explain it to me in a way that I can understand. And his teachings were just really good in going really in depth, really, really in depth. Nowadays, nowadays with commentaries, it's like, I don't rely on it as much anymore. That's what I would say. If there's something particular that I want to see. Yeah. Anyway, that's basically an overview of all the things that I use. Of course, I use colored pens, highlighters. I use, yeah. So that's basically what I use. A lot of stuff. I don't use them all at once, but yeah, that's usually in my Bible study uh, material. So that's step one. Let's move over to step two. So the second step is to go ahead and pray. So you can pray, play a bit of worship music and invite the Holy Spirit to that specific session and ask the Lord to give you discernment and also just tell him that, hey, I'm receptive to hearing from you. Give me fresh revelation, open my eyes, my ears, right? And just set the atmosphere because you will need the Holy Spirit to reveal himself to you because at the end of the day, you can have all the commentaries, you can have all the gadgets and all the materials in the world. But if you do not have the Holy Spirit there with you in that particular session, it will all be folly. Like you'll be reading the book, uh, the word of God, and you will not understand it. And I know a lot of people, non-believers, they don't see as if the word is infallible, that it is truth. So you have to invite the Holy Spirit into that session. Otherwise, it will not be a productive session. Now, my third step is I just read through the Bible chapter. At this point, I am not reading the commentaries. That is secondary. At first, I want to read through it. So I skim through it. I see whatever catches my attention. I highlight it or I underline it. And the first time that I'm reading, I'm reading by myself. I'm not using any aids because I feel as if, if the Holy Spirit is going to speak to you, he's going to really highlight or illuminate a specific verse or a specific word that you will need to revisit. So that's my first step is I just read the whole entire chapter or sometimes if it's a short book like Esther, you can read the whole book. Yes, so go ahead and just do that. Even if it doesn't make sense, trust me, it will make sense 
much later so the first thing don't feel intimidated just read through it if there's anything that oh this is interesting oh I wonder why write even those questions that you have because everything is going to come full circle another thing is that the Holy Spirit may reveal something to you that no one else has really thought of right so please do not underestimate the work of the Holy Spirit when you are reading. So just read through the whole chapter and then we'll move over to the next step. For the fourth step, I go ahead and read the commentary. Now I went ahead to write one, two, three, five benefits of having a commentary and one that you really resonate with, right? The first one is that it does provide cross references or similar passages that actually relate to that particular verse. Remember I told you to highlight things that stand out for you. So you might find that, hey, there's a cross reference and this particular verse relates to this particular verse in the Old Testament. So I really love that about commentaries. Again, it, it gives a brief synopsis about the Bible chapter. Another thing is historical background, historical and background information uh, that's important to understand. So they will tell you, hey, this is mentioned in this particular chapter because of XYZ. So they give you a historical background that you would have otherwise not found out unless you are intensely researching something. And a lot of these people are Bible scholars. A lot of people who write these commentaries are Bible scholars. So they will give you some really good gems. So I really thank God for them. Another thing is that they give the estimated time the book was written. And again, this timeline book uh, that I told you earlier is also good for that. Uh, another thing, it gives you information about the audience especially if the book is a letter they will tell you about if this it's the church of ephesus if it's the church of all this they will give you a background about hey this is what was actually going on and this is why paul was writing this letter right so yes i think bible commentaries can play a very 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 good role and there was this oh gosh i'm forgetting the, I was watching a particular Bible teacher a few weeks back and oh my goodness I laughed so hard I cried but he was just talking about the over reliance of commentaries and this is a danger as I told you you shouldn't over rely on commentaries so this particular Bible preacher was just talking about how imagine if <laughs> back in the day they have you know they wrote it in scrolls and then after that, there's a donkey that comes with just a big amount of luggage, right? And then someone asks, hey, what is that? And the people respond, oh, it's all the commentaries and opinions of the word of God. <laughs> so I found that to be so funny, but it's true. Like there's so many commentaries out there and so many opinions. So we should not over rely on the commentaries in, in as much as I honestly find them so helpful, but we should not over rely on the commentaries when we, you know, the absolute truth and the infallible word is the Bible, right? So let, <laughs> let us not over rely on the commentaries. My fifth step is to go ahead and read that Bible chapter again or the book again and the reason why I say this is we're doing an in-depth Bible study so in as much as you've got the ideas from the commentary you've gotten more information I feel as if this is the last piece of the puzzle where you have your information the commentary and now you are trying to fuse everything together with the help of the holy spirit so i feel as if now with the fresh eyes and the information and the historical background that you have read again and just try to fuse it together and i feel as if this step is continuous because you may be driving and then 
you get a word of knowledge, you may get some information or guidance. I've, I've had that <laughs> recently. I don't know if you have watched my video about Goshen, the Goshen blessing. I'm telling you, I it took me so long to study the whole Joseph's story over and over and over again. It took me forever. And still, when I was driving, I was still getting information like, you need to read more about this and that. So I wrote a really lovely post about the Goshen blessing. Gosh, yeah, that post is amazing. So yes, that's what I would say. Go ahead and read it again and you will be surprised by what you find and again this is a continuous process where god will really build up on whatever you've learned uh, through your bible study session now for step six i would say that you can journal or document whatever you have learned and how you can apply it to your current season right so you go ahead open up your journal, write it up. For me, I write a blog post. So a lot of my blog posts are based off of current seasons and Bible studies that I've done. And I just present it as a blog post. And yes, so for you, you can go ahead and maybe even do a voice note. I don't know what form is the best for you, but it's so important to journal document or just have a reference point because for me especially in my really really old blog posts where god was teaching me about something i can i can't see that oh my goodness this is amazing and i still go back and i reference a lot of the things that i've written in the past because i'm like wow this is amazing so go ahead and document because you never know if you will need that for a future season and it's funny that i've mentioned that because Behind my Bible, I'm not going to show you, but but behind my Bible, I actually <laughs> journaled a couple of things that I wanted to remember. And I just found it today. I wrote it two years ago. I wrote it June 5th, 2020. And I it, it was stuck. It was kind of like stuck to the last page because it's leather. And I found it today. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. This is why I love to write things down or to document because you, you'll you never know or it will never cement all the, all the information that you have. It will never fully cement unless you put it down on paper. There's just something, I think there's something clinical about actually putting things down on paper or pen to paper. Yes, there's something about it sticks much better. Yeah, <laughs> I hope I'm making sense. <laughs> I hope I'm making sense. This is like my third video that I've recorded today. Okay, so let us move to the last point. The last tip is for you to go ahead and pray and just ask the Holy Spirit to help you digest this information and thank God for his word and also pay attention and be in a reflective state because if it is a now word for your season you will see it repeated throughout i know you know this you will see this word being repeated or being harped in youtube videos wherever you go they're talking about this word and this word so i would say pay attention and just be re receptive to hearing from god it doesn't mean that the only time God will speak is when you're doing Bible study. No. Yes, this is an essential time that you've set apart to really read the word of God, but that doesn't mean that he will only speak to you at that time, right? He can speak to you when you're folding laundry. He can speak to you when you are running or when you're exercising. So just be very receptive uh, to hearing that. I've had a lot of times when I'm writing a blog post and literally something will just drop in my spirit and I'm there with my voice recorder just saying, D -d 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 -d. yeah, you know, so be reflective. So yeah, I think these are seven very easy steps for you. You don't have to follow it to the T. Again, you are just 
customizing and tweaking, taking the bits and bobs that you like. And yes, if it sits well with you, well and good, but essentially just have, I think the main takeaway that I would give you is give yourself grace give yourself grace and be kind to yourself because for me i do not think that i am quite of an in-depth bible study reader i know other people are so good at it and they're so gifted at it but at the end of the day as christians we have to have this relationship with god and the only way we can have true relationship with god is through bible study right so we this is this is essential in knowing God this is essential in knowing God so please do not just give yourself grace it, your Bible study might not look like mine it might not look like this big Bible uh, scholars who know everything about everything but at the end of the day it's fine you have a different journey you have a different purpose in life you're not meant to you're probably not meant to be a Bible teacher that's okay but you have a different purpose that will definitely be fulfilled when you um, read the word of God, you will be able to execute it well. And that's it, folks. Oh gosh, I'm so glad. <laughs> I'm so glad that I'm done. The reason why I recorded so many videos today, I, I usually batch record, but today it was overkill because I've recorded so many videos, is because I had a childhood friend who came to town last week and we were all over DC and guys, I am so tired. Like you're looking at me right now. I'm so tired. I'm yet to edit like a couple of videos. I think five videos that I'm about to edit right now. And guys, I am so afraid to see what's behind. <laughs> I'm so afraid to see what is behind uh, the, the recordings. I just hope that I make sense. But again, give me grace <laughs> if I don't. But other than that, I love you and guess what? I will see you on the next one.